it is time for the first ever indie author showcase. Yes, I am your host, Graham Matthews, and I am excited to bring this to the channel. This is a new monthly occurrence that's going to be happening at the end of every single month. The Indie Author Showcase is a place for us to talk about independent authors or self-published authors that have books releasing the next month so we can go and support them. And so this will tell you about upcoming books that are coming out in the month of April. It is the end of March and so let's get ready to read some independent authors in April. And so I'm going to be choosing five books around that, maybe three to five, depending how long this first one is. And it'll be with different genres. I found a lot of fantasy genres this month. There also is a little bit of historical fiction and one horror this month as well. But I'm gonna try to have a mosh posh of all of it so everybody can have a little piece of what is needed and what they like in reading. And so I'm excited to do this. And it was a lot of work, to be honest. It's hard to find where all these indie authors are publishing things. I looked around on Reddit, I went to Facebook, I went everywhere, I got kicked off a lot of different pages by being like, hey, I wanna do this thing. And I was wondering why there wasn't a central source to be able to know the releases coming out. And I eventually did find a lot of people that were reaching out and I kind of filtered through too. There's a lot of work. And so please, if you could like, subscribe, do all that stuff. I'm excited to be able to do this. This is a project I'm very passionate about. And so let's get started. So coming out April 2nd is our first book. It is a de debut novel that seems to be a historical fiction slash romance type novel called Big Rock Passion in the Pacific by Reggie Brick. Let's take a look at the cover. I don't know who the artist is, but you can see they portrayed peacefulness very well. I can feel the sand beneath my toes and I feel at peace with the person who is meditating on the beach. It looks like she might be a nurse of some sorts, and you can see a city landscape in the foreground. I have a feeling that this character and this person is going to overcome something big in their story. Honolulu, Hawaii, 1988. When friends encouraged Janae to join their adventure to Hawaii, the 26-year-old celebrated the chance to mingle with new eligible men on her quest for love. Paradise found her paddling against strong currents for a fresh start and a chance to revamp her heart, mind, and body. Janae was not prepared for a trifecta of bad luck that sunk her to rock bottom. Rigorous training for an island triathlon gave her physical and mental toughness that pulled her out of the darkest of caves. She rode the wave of confidence to command attention and passionate love that she craved. In her debut novel, inspired by a true story, Reggie Brick reimagines the escapades of three traveling nurses in the prime of their lives. So if that book sounds interesting to you, I'm going to have the pre-order in the description. And I forgot to really mention what we're doing. We're going to mention the book, we're going to read the overview, and then I'm going to tell you about the author. It is called The Indie Author Showcase, and so you need to know who this person is. So, Reggie got the spark to write when she received three shiny gold stars on the first story she ever wrote in third grade. She studied nursing at the University of Kansas and received her MBA from USF. Nurses inspire her in her personal and professional life. Reggie is forever connected with the strong nurses in her family, including her mother, aunt, cousin, niece, and sister-in-law. Reggie can be frequently found in the airport en route to a new favorite destination, but her favorite activity is relaxing with her husband in their cedar hot tub taking in Mountain Vista. If you want to support Reggie, then I will have the link in the description and you can pre-order Big Rock, Passion in, the <laughs> Passion in the Pacific. Our next book is going to be a paranormal urban fantasy coming out April 7th called Out of the Embers by S.P. Neeson. This cover was done by Natasha Snow. I love the look of the embers coming up from the ground and the beauty of the background. I like the English style building in the back, the imp on the top right corner of the main character there. She looks strong and also I love the placement of the wand. It's in the very center of the O and it shines bright and really pulls the cover together. Let's get one thing straight. I am not Kaylin. In fact, unlike everyone else I've met in my life, I hate her. She embodies every bad thing that's ever happened to me. I must set all that aside when my old friend, a wyvern named Derrico, comes to me for help keeping his family safe. I can't help him on my own, and I need her assistance before a creature more powerful than the wyverns decimates the nest. 
Now, I'm on a journey to move Derrico's family to the refuge of Kaelin's estate. I'm out of my depth, trapezing through the wilds of the Sedae. So she sends Andres to protect me, a half-human, the lowest of the lesser fae, according to the rest of the Sedae, and a man who shouldn't cause desire to stern within me. Can we get the nest to safety before the creature returns? And how many of my biases will Andres force me to discard before we get there? This book is from the Glamourbound series, which currently has two books out and a third one coming out in May, so you have plenty to read in the series. I talked to S.P. Neeson and I asked her if this book was great by itself, and she said, yes, I wrote it that way. You can definitely read it on its own. However, it will spoil the book one and two of the Glover Brown series. So she does recommend that starting with book one called The Truth in the Smoke. I too will have book one in the description for you to be able to buy now. You can get that immediately. And of course, to be able to pre-order this book too. This sounds interesting to you. The description for S.P. Neeson or her author biography on Amazon is, S.P. Neeson's recipes for books always includes a little bit of twisted tropes, a handful of found families, and a dot dash of swearing and spice. When she's out riding, she'd be found having fun with her family in Canada's Great White North or hanging out with her Angora goats. I love that and I love Canada. This next book literally makes my skin crawl and I mean that literally and it's just, you're gonna see this is our horror novel of the month the cover's a little terrifying so if you're a little squeamish i don't recommend i recommend skipping if you're a little squeamish this cover is pretty terrifying i just want to be up front so this horror novel is coming out april 15th it's called skin that screams by thomas stewart this cover embodies the title skin that screams the artist is unknown but what they have portrayed truly is frightening a person who looks tortured by not only the depths of hell, but also by the many mouths that you can see upon his skin. I never noticed the first time looking at this cover, and once I did, I truly cannot sleep at night. You ever wonder why it can be so comfortable to be in your own skin? You think maybe it has something to do with how you look in the mirror? Could it be that you've eaten too much? Maybe you've even gotten yourself in quite the predicament letting yourself get hurt. Whatever the case, though, one thing is certain. All flesh has a story, and it's screaming it. These tales are those of what one man's skin tells him when he suddenly develops a strange condition that causes it to tell horrid things to him. The author, Thomas Stewart, is a young ghoul with a lifelong fascination with the art of terror and the macabre. When he's not watching horror movies or reading horror novels or stories, he's always crafting his own chilling gospels of horror to terrify and eternally rob you of a peaceful slumber. Currently, he publishes most of his work to Reddit under his pen name, Corpse Child. Many of his horror stories have been featured and adapted to audio narrations by a wide variety of YouTube narrators, as well as the ones commissioned on the Chilling app. Has become a household name for the Chilling Tales for Dark Nights podcast and has released several horrifying titles that have plagued the minds of many. You can follow him for more of his work through his Facebook, Instagram, and his subreddit, r slash corpse child gospels on a side note when i requested for debut novels or novels coming out in april for pre-order i said thank you when they posted their link and he said yes my child next we have a lgbtq plus fantasy novel i'm very excited for this one it comes out april 18th called the abjurer by tobias begley it's book three of the journals of Evander Taylor. Look at this cover. It is done by Luminita Fam. She did the other covers of the series as well. And I just love the capture of Dark Academia from the magic escaping the woman's hands at the top of the cover to the young students at the bottom with the shield and the flame. It, uh, it looks so good and matches a very mystical and magical aesthetic. Fun fact about this book before we jump into the overview is this is the only book that was a fan that requested me to talk about this series for this channel. It was somebody who said, I'm really excited for the series to come out. There's two other books in this series and this is the date that it comes out. And so there's somebody who has read it and is anticipating this one. So that is awesome. And I love that. So take that as you will. So here is the overview of The Abjurer. Evan Taylor needs to kill an Archmage. If he can survive a party first, with the Silver Queen calling in her debt, 
Archmage Wargs O's binding him into assistance and silence, and new classes pulling at Evan from all sides, this year is not turning out to be the peaceful and prosperous introduction to abjuration magic that Evan had hoped for. While his enemies and friends alike racing for more power, Evan is going to need to strain his magical skills like never before if he wants to become strong enough to survive. I also have linked in the bio the first book called The Enchanter, and I think what I see happening here is it's covering the different schools of magic that I personally see for wizards in Dungeons and Dragons, which I think is cool. So you can check that out in the description below if you would like to do that. Tobias, let's learn about him. Tobias Bigley is a physics graduate who decided that physics wasn't magical enough and took up writing fantasy, at least when they aren't busy with their two cats. They fell in love with fantasy at a young age, raised on a diet of mythology, Lord of the Rings, and the Chronicles of Prydain. Driven by spite and far too much coffee, they took up writing to try and put out engaging fantasy stories with LGBT plus protagonists, a luxury they wish they had access to while growing up. So go check that out in the description below as long as well with all these other books. The last book in our first ever in the author showcase is coming out April 30th, 2024. It's a mystical creature fantasy with some romance called Shifting Threads by Michaela B. Buchanan. This is the second book in the Mind of Vengeance trilogy. This beautiful cover was done by Elion by the book cover designer. I love this art so much. The floral patterns on the sides, it feels like snow is coming off of them. It feels cold and chilly with the wind wisps going by the main character's face. And at the very bottom, you can see what seems like a character traveling in the forest. It was my place to die in that ritual, not his. Evelyn and Ulrich barely escaped the purest compound with their lives. Yet survival is bitter when two of their companions weren't so fortunate. Racked with grief and consumed by guilt, Evelyn feels a chasm growing between them. If her being in his life brings him so much pain and peril, how can she let herself love him? Upon returning to Mistspire, Alric suspects a Vita stalks the city streets. As he seeks to uncover the truth, Evelyn's tumultuous emotional thread weighs heavily on him. The bonds his Cormum heritage seeks to reinforce are a harsh reminder of his dark past. Within the king's castle, stability is crumbling. Evelyn's betrayal by the crown prince of Finder and subsequent torture by the purists threaten the upturn of the political sphere. Her relentless purist of vengeance revealed her animoy magic to the world. Without the shield of anonymity, old and new enemies rise to circle above. Will King Elric protect her? Or is the threat of war between Lothia and Findre too much of a risk? As Evelyn struggles to reconcile who and what she is, can she protect not only those closest to her, but all the magical races of Hayrak? The first book is called Call of Blood. I have it here because I just really love this art. And the book comes out really, really good. I love the cover, I love what the artist is doing, and it's piqued my interest already. So I also will have this linked in the description, and let's read Michaela's bio as well. Michaela B. Buchanan has always wanted more griffins and fantasy books she loves reading. The idea of a young woman becoming a griffin writer came to her at the age of 14. Ten years later, she put fingers to the keyboard and turned that kernel of an idea into what is now called Call of Blood. When not writing or reading, she could be found playing Dungeons and Dragons with her husband and friends, playing video games like Stardew Valley and Seven Days to Die, or watching anime and K-dramas. Michaela resides in Durham, North Carolina with her husband and miniature schnauzer, Umaru. You can find her on Instagram and TikTok. So that is our first and ever, the first ever indie author showcase. All these books are in the description. There's so many authors out there that aren't being seen. And so let's support the ones that we like. I know that there are a lot of fantasy novels, there's a lot of romance, there's some memoirs that were coming out and there's a lot to pick and choose from and there's a lot to take a risk on too. And this is just a project of mine that I'm excited for. So let's support these authors. If there's a book that spoke out to you today, go out into the description, pick it up, click it in the bio and, and buy it. You know, I bought one already. I'm going to be getting the sequel as well. And I'm probably going to be getting a couple from the series and reading them as well. If you have any friends that are indie authors or self-published, please 
send them my way or put them in the comments for a May release. We're gonna be doing this every single month and so I'm gonna be working hard to find those next releases that are coming out next month as well. And so I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you liked this idea and let's see this thing grow. I probably need to make my background different or come up with an epic slogan, but we'll get there. And yes, thank you for watching. As always, have a great day and doodles.